God's servant is going to bring God the word and uh, express the spirit, allow the Lord to use him. So let's re release him right now because I know he is ready, he's charged up. Amen. Put your hands together as I bring to the podium God's servant, prophet, Manton, to the glory of God. Are you clapping? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Celebrate the Lord. Celebrate the grace of God. Glory! Yeah. Let's lift our hands to the Lord. You can take this. I'm not T.D. Jakes. I don't need the napkins. T.D. Jakes would be sweating and he says, <clears throat> it's a two-napkin service. I did this on my head. If I did that, I'd have a problem. My hair would go seven directions, right? So I don't need to do this, you know, and have the guy come up behind you and do this on your head. Uh, even if I'm sweating, let it, let it run. Let it run. Praise the Lord. Let's lift our hands. I love the preachers that, you know, put their initials and their logos on, on the napkins, you know. Very nice, very nice, but I've never needed it, you know. Are you guys going to stay with me? You want some fire? Fire the Holy Ghost on you. Fire on the holy, the holy power of God upon you. All right. All right, you can be seated, you guys, if you Everybody take your seats. God bless you. I heard the Lord say this to me, that he's bringing people into the realm of great success. Amen. Success. It's like a foreign word sometimes in the church, you know? Have you heard the word success said so many times in church? What do we hear in church? Problem, breakthrough, miracle, you know, on and on. You know, situations, trust in God, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But the word success is so powerful. Write it over your head right now in the spirit, in your mind. Write it somewhere. S-U-C-C-E-S-S. -S. Let's say that's for me. Hallelujah. You see, people are just thinking. You're not getting it. Okay, uh, you take a minute, all right? Joshua 1.8 said, Meditate in my word day and night, and then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. I have a question to ask you. All of you watching online, God bless you everywhere you are. Praise the Lord. All the people here in the church and everybody in the region, everybody in the land, everybody in the city, everybody in the nation, get ready for God's formula of success. Can I teach you a little bit? Can I give you some, some things from heaven? Now, the only place you find God in the verse of Joshua 1.8 is this. The word meditate in my word day and night that's you and then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have see i'm having it good success doctrinally speaking and if you have any kind of brains and sense you can you can say hey you know i have a lot to do here God, God didn't say he was doing anything. He already gave his word. But in that equation, he did not say he was going to do anything. Isn't that amazing? Everything is you. Last night, uh, Bishop Apostle, last night, you know what? I was having a cappuccino at about 1130 at night. I went somewhere. And the Lord stirred this word up in my spirit about killing evil. It came to me so strong. I went on Facebook and I put it on. If you see my Facebook page, you'll see it. 
I went about 35 minutes or so just about killing this, killing that, killing this, killing that, misconceptions, distractions, deceptions, evil, lack, things I want that I don't have. You got to go after it. And the Lord kept saying, you have to go after it or else it's not coming after you. You know something? Even God does not succeed. Succeed. Does not, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, make your destiny happen. You do that. For destiny is not left up to chance, but it's a matter of choice. You choose or you lose. You snooze and you lose. You sleep a little slumber, a little sleep, a little folding of the hands, and surely thy poverty shall come to you like, a, like an armed man. But the Bible says, Solomon said, the diligent hand makes rich, but the slack hand makes the want. And how did Solomon get so rich? By action. How did David get so rich? By being so passionate. Lift your hands and say, Lord, touch me. Get the fire in me. 1 Samuel 30, verse 8. I was talking about this last night. He said, this happened. It's so bad. So what should I do? Lord, should I pursue them? Should I go and overtake them? Should I then recover all? <laughs> and God said, yeah, I was waiting for you to see what you're going to do. Lift your hands. God is always standing there waiting for us to see what we're going to do. He was already there before. When you start to, let me give you a, a key here. When you start to walk in great uh, fierce boldness and aggressive action. Amen. That's what brings success. God will stand there and go, oh, I was waiting for you. We think we're waiting on the Lord, but he's waiting on us. The Lord spoke to me clearly many times. He said this to me and prophetically in, in visions I've had, open visions I've had. He said to me, son, when you begin to arrive at where you know I want you to walk to and get to, I was already there waiting for you. Lift your hands. He was already there. And how can he be here and there and everywhere? How can God's presence show up in a Sunday morning service at 11 a.m. If, if, if it happens in whatever church, if they have the presence of God all over the planet Earth in every time zone? How, can, how does it happen? Because he's omnipresent. Why? Because he's omnipotent. The devil's not. The devil can only be in one place at one time. And they have their network of demons, even that are in derision, because they're all, they're all evil and they've been corrupted and cursed by God. And they can, guess what? They can never recover. The devil can never be saved. There's no hope for him. And those that side with him are going where he's going. We call them the Luciferians, the people that love the devil, the people that love, they think he's something good, but he's really, he's really a loser. The nature of loss is the opposite of success. Write that down. The nature of loss and losing is the opposite of, of succeeding. Failure can be in the learning process. You see many famous people like that. I remember Denzel Washington did a whole little tirade on that, the, the, the A-list actor. You have to fail, you have to fail. I said, bro, slow down, please. I don't like failure, okay? I understand what you're saying because you had to knock yourself so many ways to get where you got and now you've made it. I understand the concept, but it's kind of sad to hear about failure. So, <clears throat> though you may try many things and be walking in the realms of uh, figuring things out along the way, focus on success, not failure. Let me give you some keys. I have a great book here. Uh, <clears throat> that I wrote, Prophetic Keys to Successful Living. And the foreword's been written by our great Archbishop Harrison Nanga. And uh, he wrote three pages about me and the anointing that I carry and walk in. In this book, you need to get the book just to see what he said, as well as all the other things. But I have a, a sub-chapter on success. And I said this, uh, well, there's many things. Let me skip down a little bit for time. Yeah, if you want to really have a big life, you have to build empires in your mind. Write that down. I need to build empires in my mind. I know one famous billionaire from Australia, and I was with him in America in some meetings. He's an unusual guy. He only goes to a church once, and he never goes back. 
He said, why would I go back to the same place if I haven't been to the next one yet? I only have so much time. And that's the way he does it. <clears throat> he said, to be his friend, a condition of being his friend is you have to have empires in your mind. And he can talk to you for a couple of minutes and know if you have it or not. Lift your hands and say, Lord, expand my, my horizons. Expand my territory. What did uh, Jabez pray in First Chronicles 4, 9 and 10? He said, Lord, expand my territories, but I want to be innocent in the process. I don't want to harm anybody. Let me not be a harm or a, de a detriment to anyone, but expand me. Enlarge my territory. Isaiah 54. Other places, lengthen your cords and your stakes and look to the hills. Look to the places where I give you Abram. God told Abram as far as... Look everywhere you see. I've given it to you. What do you see? Remember when God said to Jeremiah, what do you see? Remember he said to the man who saw... Uh, was looking to receive his sight. He said, I see men as trees walking. I'm not seeing them clearly yet. And he got another touch. We need a correction in our sight realm. Amen. Can I tell you, everything that you want is available if you can see it. Amen. Watch, watch me now. Watch me now. Watch me now. Don't shout at me now, please. I want to just teach you. Just let me do it. The Lord said... To me, if you see it, you can seize it. <laughs> if you can only see it, and how do you see it? You, you, you get the sight of, by the Holy Ghost. And if you, if you see it, you'll say it. And if you say it, you'll see it. You know the power of speech. Procreative speech. It does something. I have so much in this book. On that, but in the realm of success, I wrote this you must have a palace to rule from. Where is it? And also, you can't run fast with balls and chains around your ankles. The spiritual luggage of yesterday's issues, you have to let them go. Like the camel went through the eye of the needle. They unloaded the camel and he crawled through on his knees to the other side, and then they put the stuff back on him again. You have to unload. Lift your hands. There's breakthrough coming. There's breakthrough. There's manifestation. The Lord's been talking about it. He spoke it yesterday. But how is it going to happen? You can get rid of some things. Especially what you're seeing in your mind. You know, what you see reproduces itself inside of you. Your daily routine, if it's a good one, will bring you into success. Don't despise the day also of small beginnings. Just work where, where you're at. Thank God. Here's a principle. Thank God in advance for increase. Oh, this is powerful. This is what I was looking for. Get ready for this. You need to write this down. If you want divine success, you need to continuously be proclaiming the solution and not the problem. <clears throat> people speak about the problem all the time. You ever have people come up to you, Pastor? I know you have. They come up to you and they tell you the whole long list of the problem. I'm like, ho, 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 hold it. Hold that. Let's find what the word says and start speaking the word. You know the problem too well. You've rehearsed it too many times. We need to proclaim the solution now. Okay? When you have a problem, you don't want to nurse it. You don't want to rehearse it. You want to curse it and reverse it. Say amen, somebody. Amen. You don't want to nurse it and hold on to it. You want to curse it and reverse it and cast it away from you. And fill your mind with success and the bigger dream. Last night I was listening to my friend Jesse Duplantis. Again, he came on. He's speaking at a friend of mine's church in America. And uh, wow, he shared a few points that were just enlightening. He said when Air Force One... The presidential jet, the, the giant uh, 747 customized that flies into uh, where his airport is in, in, in New Orleans, uh, it has to park next to his area. He has the whole area. He even has his own fuel farm. <laughs> he gets fuel for so, 
He says he's burnt about two and a half million gallons of fuel. Lift your hands, jet fuel, flying around the world. He said, I have one plane, now I'm getting another one. He said, I have a Falcon 7X, I had a 50, and I gave it to Mac Hammond in uh, Minneapolis, and, and he gave it to him. And uh, Mac is flying around the world, opening churches. So that jet is building churches. Now we got the 7X Falcon, and then I'm going to tell you something in a second that's going to amaze you. And then now he's getting the Falcon 9, which goes intercontinental. He doesn't have to stop twice on the way. He could just fly all the way to another continent without stopping. And people say, what do you need that for? He says to go preach, to redeem the time. Do you know he's 74 years old now? 74. So he, in fact, the, the, the more he goes, the more he does. He says he's reaching potential audience of over 2 billion people on the planet. I want to do that. I said, I want to do that. I want to do that. I was in a meeting in the KICC. Let me tell you something to amaze you. And this bishop uh, from, K from Nairobi, he says, I've been following you, man of God, for years. I, in fact, I was in your meeting, meetings years ago. You wouldn't know. But I've been so blessed by what you've spoken over Kenya and other nations. I've been listening to you from, from afar from a long time, for a long time. And he says, I am an aerodynamics engineer. I work on big private jets. And he said, thus saith the Lord, God's going to give you a Falcon jet. He pointed at me in the meeting. I hadn't seen him. And he preached like the anointing was on him so strong. I was like, this is like the 10th confirmation I've heard of that. What do I need it for? I need it to travel the world. Let me tell you, I'm going to get into a flow. Maybe we'll take a ride together sometime. I thought about that already. I'm going to get into a flow at some point where we're just going to be geared up for it. And we're going to go Budapest, London, Rome, Athens, Cairo. Abuja, Johannesburg, Nairobi, bang, 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 then to the east, then to the far east, then to America, then to Canada, then to the islands, just hitting the cities and releasing the fire. Lift your hands, I'm telling you. <clears throat> it's a reality in me already. I had, a, I had a, a great prophetess from America who's been a partner with my ministry for a long time. And we were together in a conference. She was visiting from the U.S. She's coming in December, I think, again. But she's a very accurate prophet. She lives in Colorado, in Denver, Colorado, in the mountains. And she's Kenyan. She's Kenyan, by the way. <clears throat> she's a Kikuyu lady. And she said to me, I see the private jet. I see the jet. I don't know why I'm talking about that. The Holy Ghost. How, do, how did I get into this? I didn't plan to say any of this. When she said it, I was like feeling like, you know, I was in, my mind was engaged in a lot of things that I was doing right then. I thought, ah, thank you. I've heard that before. But, you know, right now I don't feel as that relevant. Then as I go on, it just keeps coming, becoming bigger and bigger. You know, the day we'll go to uh, over to the west side of the, of the continent here and just fly in and fly out. Lift your hands. What am I doing? I'm speaking out what's already real inside of me. So that's an example. I don't have time to tell more. I had a woman of God. We were having a meeting and she's invited me to do some conferences and things like that and some other uh, apostles. And, and, and uh, she asked me what my vision was. I told her like two things. I think it was too much to even hear. I thought, how much time do you have? And God said it first, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But as you meditate therein day and night and observe to do all that is written therein as much as you possibly can. For then, after that, you'll have a walk that's prosperous and you'll attain great success. Lift your hands and say, that's for me. You have to see it first. I wrote another book called The Laws of Success. 
And uh, this is sold out of many printings. And uh, we're going into an expanded edition to redo this. And this, is, this was transcribed by a brilliant man that worked for me. And he wrote 66 things that I said in the message by the Holy Ghost in a one hour and 15 minute message. I think I have the original video somewhere. Yeah, we do. And uh, I worked on it and turned it into a book and it has 66. I like the number 66 because six is the number of man. Amen. And there's 66 books in the Bible. And the longest chapter, the longest book is Isaiah. And Isaiah has 66 chapters. What is that about? Because six is the number of man, and man is the one who needs the word. Lift your hands. The word is not for angels. The word is not for, for, for just knowing and having knowledge just to be worked with. You got to work with it. And I'm telling you, I make you a promise prophetically. If you'll work with the word of God, you, 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 you have no idea how successful you'll become. You don't need the, the help of man. You need the help of God and you need to work all of this inside of yourself. So this book has 66 diamond keys for your success and prosperity. It's available right now. I have one of the master copies. But let me read you in two minutes. I'm going to read you six of them. Out of the 66. Say thank you very much. Say, say thank you. Ooh, Lord. Number one, your arch enemies. How many know you have arch enemies? Let me tell you what they are. Poverty, sickness, and ignorance are three of them. Poverty, sickness, and ignorance. Can I tell you what, what remedies that is? Third John 2. John said, Beloved, you, Thomas, I wish above all things, you, John, you, whatever your name is, I wish, pray, and desire above everything else that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. Prosper is the opposite of poverty. Prosperity is the opposite of, pro of poverty. Amen. Health and healing. He said, I, I, God has promises to you. You need to have it. All through the Bible, we see the promise. Yes? Yes or yes? And then, even as our soul prospers, that deals with the ignorance level. Ignorance is not, it sounds like a bad word, but it means not to know. Amen? When you don't know something, now stupidity is another thing. Stupidity is when you know, but you keep doing the, the thing again. <laughs> Albert Einstein said, amen, a definition of insanity is doing the same thing again and again, expecting a new result. No, the curse causes doesn't come. But I'll tell you, the blessing causes doesn't come either. Is that the rain? Well, I guess the rain has come. Number two, speed. I found something out. Speed is power. Say amen. Did you say that's your thing for the year? It's in my book, number two, and I wrote this years ago. It's right here. Number two, speed is power. You see speed? If you could see, if you have super, superman vision, you could see the small print here. <laughs> and I wrote this down. I said, I've come to realize something. Anything that slows me down is of the devil. Anything that gets in my way and blocks my progress or slows me down in any way from moving very fast is there's usually a devil somewhere that needs to be kicked out. We need to take authority over that tonight. Praise the Lord. I don't know what happened with the rain and where everybody is. We're not waiting for anyone. We're moving ahead. Let me tell you, I'm here tonight. I'm here tonight. I'm going to release the fire. It's going to remain in the atmosphere. And the day's coming. You're going to see. It's going to, there's an anointing. There's an, a mantle of God falling here. You're going to begin to see it. It's going to remain on this platform that I'm standing on. It's going to remain here. And in the days to come, let me prophesy, everybody's going to get a breakthrough. I said, everybody's going to get a breakthrough. And this church is going to expand. It's going to unfold. It's going to unlock into new dimensions of things in every possible way. Man of God, the Lord says, I'm causing you to see far and wide and high and long and deep. 
to new dimensions, the Lord says. And God says you're going to see things. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna fold your arms and say, Lord, please. I'm glad I'm seeing this now, but I wish I saw it earlier. But the Lord said the opening of the eyes is coming. I think I said this last night. The opening of the eyes. Yes, 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 yes. The sight realm. The sight realm. Lift your hands, everybody. Arashaka. Speed is power. You want to achieve something. It's absolutely necessary that things move fast and quicker. And you rise up and soar. Doing and achieving more. You rise up and soar. Doing and achieving more. And guess what? That's up to you. That's not up to God alone. I heard this statement by a, pro a prolific apostle, and I'll quote him. He said, just because you see your destiny doesn't guarantee that you'll get there. Hello? The Bible is an action book. To give me one lazy man that was a patriarch, you can't find him, was Moses lazy. He had his hands up so high that he was falling asleep, and God had to take Aaron and her to hold his hands up. And then Jethro, uh, the Jethro principle. Exodus 18. The Lord said, you, Jethro told him by the divine wisdom, you're doing too much. You need these other people to help you. Moses wasn't lazy, he was overworked. Praise the Lord. The apostles in the book of Acts were so busy, Amen. That God had to anoint the diaconate, which is in Acts chapter 6. Take men with these qualifications, full of the Holy Ghost, full of wisdom, of good report, good character, zealous, faithful, diligent, amen, and clever. <coughs> and put them into the position to serve. For you need to be in the word and prayer. I know what that's about. That's what we call the protocol system, amen. The deacons, amen? Exodus 18, Jethro. Acts chapter 6, the Lord said, the diaconate, the deacons. Diaconate is the Greek word for that. Lift your hands for divine help. I'm talking to leaders right now. I hope you, I, I see the hands went up very quick. You want this. Yeah, people are standing on their feet. Wonderful. I, I'm amazed that you're catching that right now. The help that you need. It's coming. I prophesy it's coming. The help that you need is coming. The help that you desire is coming. When the Lord sees you're serious, that's when he'll get very serious with you. Number three, environments and ideas. Poor environments, naturally, spiritually, and socially, will cause good people even to miss God's blessings as they continue wallowing around in poverty and lack how many know that's the story of kenya how many know that's the story of too many people lift your hands we curse it we destroy it we reverse it in jesus name amen, amen. you see people walking around they're so down and poor why when god is so rich and certain people that figure out how to get wealthy and how to prosper amen, amen. they uh they figured something out. How many, how many want to figure out what great people have figured out? You need to tap into that. Now, okay, I got a lot. You see, it's a very long cha sub-chapter. I don't have time to read through it. Number four, possessions. <laughs> God wants you to have land throughout the earth. Lift your hands. Karaba, shalabahate. Every person that he made covenant with, he gave land to. He gave Abraham land. Amen. Adam had the garden. He had it all. David and Solomon, how much land did they have? As much as they wanted. You know, Solomon was doing all kinds of business. Read through the Chronicles. You'll see so many things about what he was doing. Business. In fact, one time, they went to get a, a, a whole a cache of, of gold, treasure of gold. Do you know Solomon didn't even go? Do you know his own assistant didn't even go? Hiram, Solomon's assistant, didn't even go. The servants of Solomon, the Bible says, went 
And you know, they, were, they feared and revered the rich king. They weren't going to steal any of that gold. They knew they, they, they'd lose their head. And they brought it all there. And it was in the billions of dollars. And they didn't touch anything. They had Solomon given the decree. And Solomon's assistant Hiram told the servants how to do it. And it happened and it was successful. Look at the life of Jehoshaphat, great real estate mogul. He even had exotic animals and all kinds of lands and properties. But he had a downfall. He trusted a wrong person and it messed him up. I said it last night. I'll repeat it again. Success is based as much on avoiding the wrong as it is on embracing the right. How many believe God to help you avoid the wrong? The wrong connection, the wrong person, the wrong relationship. In fact, if anyone's in your world right now and you watching wherever you are, anybody wrong in your world that's intimidating you, oppressing you, causing you problems, let God, I prophesy, is going to destroy their movements and cast them out of your life. Say thank you. Say thank you over here. Thank you. That was a gift, you know. You know that was a gift? Yeah, I don't know how much you even deserved it, but the Lord gave it anyway. Before we even knew what we needed, God so loved the world <laughs> that he gave his only begotten son that all, everyone who believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. God so loved the world that he gave first we're more than conquerors through him because he first loved us. We weren't looking for him. He, he, he looked for us first. Possessions. Number five, identity. I want to tell you something. Your identity is royalty. My identity is as a king. I am a king. I am a king. I am a king that's not a that's not a, a, a rambunctious statement he's the king of and the lord of the god of small g small l small k but we're royalty uh, revelation 1 6 says we're we're kings and priests unto the most high someone just begin to lift your hands and close your eyes and meditate on this and see yourself as you are as a man, I'm a king. If you're a lady, you're a queen. If you're a lady, say what you are. Say, I am a... Say it. You're a queen. See, I can't say it because I'm a man. It can't come out of my mouth. So I have to tell you to say it. I can't say it for you. Because I'm not. I'm a king. You ladies, you're a what? Can you say... You say queen, queen. I can't even hear you. Can you raise your voice and say it? You're what? What are you? It would take me about three hours to really convince everybody. Maybe I'll, I'll have some more time to teach on this. And your babies are princes and princesses. How many know already I need to come back again here? How many know we're not done? Praise the Lord. It's like 7, 12, 13. I got to stop. Oh, God. Time, time, time. Shakarantara. How many would love me to come back again and uh, do, do some more of this? the Lord kings and priests unto the most high royalty 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 I am I am that I am abundance number six abundance you could truly I wrote this you can tr I wrote this by the Holy Ghost and I preached it first and it turned into a book. You can truly reach a point of not even having wants, let alone needs. If you'll just walk with the shepherd and believe him to take you to green pastures. We see Psalm 23 is all about that. Psalm, uh, excuse me, Job 22, 21 to 28. I saw this in a vision. And I didn't get to say it last night because I didn't remember it, but it's coming back to me. A couple days ago, Apostle, I had a, 
I had a vision. I saw this scripture, and early in the morning, I dictated some notes on it. I saw this. It's like it's uh, it's it's like where the Lord where the Lord said, "Return to the Almighty and acquaint yourself with Him, and be at peace, and thereby good will come unto you, and even gold will be put on as dust on the floor for you." Lift your hands. That's the kind of walk we're to have. So I was debating between the thing about peace and good and almighty and returning and being in his presence. Amen. Psalm 91 said, if you dwell under the secret place of the Most High and dwell under the shadow of the Almighty, amen, you'll have all these other things, including protection from every enemy. And Psalm 91, 16, he said, with long life, I'll satisfy you, show you my salvation because your mind is stayed on me. Now in verse 28, in Job 22, 28, this, the, the verse says, you decree something and it'll happen. Lift your hands. The power is in our speech. But tonight, we're going to pray for people, but I also want, I, I also believe prophetically that I've already empowered you through this teaching. Amen. I've already empowered you through this message. Hallelujah. I've already empowered you through this message to stand up and take it yourself. You don't always need to come, wait to come to the altar. Amen. The Lord spoke to me about a special seed, a prophetic seed for new beginnings. And I, I don't know how we're going to do that. You can tell me how we can administrate that in a minute. I'm going to give you the mic here. But I want to challenge people to break your way through, even with a special seed, prophetically. I'll, I'll tell you what it is when we have a minute. Rasha karacha. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, chalante of Surumana. Mambra shakara tena bashata la baha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Apostle? Hallelujah. Maranchela asalama cheto osata atika sata. The Lord is speaking here and empowering people how to get your breakthrough. And I'm telling you, tonight is a crossover time for you in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you. I'm Thomas Manton IV. I'm not done, but more later. Love you much. Let's receive our apostle with a great hand clap as he, as Dr. Paul Anetje says, with a, a, a hand clap of praise. How does he say it? A clap? A hand clap of praise. I like the way he says it. God bless you. I love you. Amen. Do you love me? Stretch your hands out this way and say, Lord, such as the man of God carries, let me tap into that grace in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, let's celebrate Jesus for this wonderful man of God. Amen. Prophet Thomas Manton, we love you and we appreciate you. And thank you for sharing the information in your book with us tonight. Man of God, please. Praise Hallelujah. The Praise the Lord. Praise Hallelujah. The Lord. Praise the Lord. Lift your hands, everybody. Shut up, shut up. The Lord says, I am summoning the giants in the land over the city of Nairobi. Yes. I'm summoning four to them to come together and I'm gather together them. as the army of God, yeah. as the eagles, as the kings yeah. and the priests and the queens yes. and, and, and the, the, the entrepreneurs and even people in the government. Yes. The Lord says, I'm summoning them forth. The God says, yes. I'm opening the heavens. Yes. And tonight, I'm releasing a fire Lados. down upon this house. Yes. Uh, and God said it's going to move with speed. Yes. Even as you cars flying by on the highway, God says, I'll follow you. Yes. I'll follow you. Yes. You better under the sound of his voice. The Lord says, get ready now. Get ready. I'm going to begin to cause you to come forward. I'm going to begin to cause you to rise up. I'm going to begin to cause you to break through. Yes. I'm going to begin to cause my fire to come upon you. Yes. And you're going to see the brightness of your rising. Yes. Isaiah the prophet said, arise and shine. Yes. For your light has come yes. because the glory of the Lord Yes. is risen upon you. Yes. So gross darkness covers the earth. My light shall be seen upon thee. And kings will come to the brightness of yes. your rising. 
God says, get ready now. Yes. For I'm working on the sanctuaries of men. Yes. I'm working on the people. I'm uh, working on you. Let and God see. says, as you begin to get developed and come forth, everything ex external will come to be internal. Yes. Everything out there will begin to come forward yes. in your life, inside of you. The Lord says, get ready now. Get ready. Because this is the night of breakthrough. Yes. And the fire is coming. Lift your hands, everybody. Lift hey. your hands. The fire, the fire, the fire. And the Lord spoke to me about sowing a prophetic seed of a breakthrough of new beginnings with the number eight. And I want to challenge you to come to the altar. We're going to pray for you. The Lord spoke this to me very clearly, very clearly, very clearly. I don't always do this, but I, I feel, I feel people are being summoned to come forward. Stand up, stand up. Some of you sat down when I talk about that. Just stand up. Everybody stand for a minute. I want you to begin to walk around and say, Lord, I want to, I want to step into the realm of something new. I see God impregnating people's minds with ideas that you never had of yourself but it's going to come as a gift from God and you're going to begin to step into that enterprise and begin to birth that organization and that order apostle even things that you plan to do with other departments and other formations of things the Lord says he's impregnating you with that and the external is going to come to become internal the Lord says, get ready to watch those people of destiny begin to come forward. I prophesy that everybody here, you're going to begin to see the destiny uh, that, that God's ordained for you. And the dream team, the dream team, the Lord dream says, team. the platform mm. that I've ordained will be built. And you're going to begin to see yes. the people yes. that have the things that you need to accomplish it. Yes. Because no man can stand by himself and accomplish the great things that God has done. He spoke to me so many things. He's spoken to you and you and you. So many things and all of you, so many things. How can they possibly get done if you don't have the help? If you don't have those people to walk with you. Yeah. If you don't have those people, every joint supplies. Yeah. Does every eye, is, is everyone an eye? Is everyone an ear? Is everyone a hand? Is everyone a foot? No. The body has to come together to yeah. build the thing. That's and God right. says, I'm going to make a whole man in your life. A giant warrior. The Lord says prophetically, he's releasing the angels. I saw this vision here last night yes. while I was standing on the platform. I saw the angels of God standing above the city of Nairobi like this with their arms folded like waiting for the instruction of a commander. Well, I'm a commander in chief. I want to speak to them right now and say, come here. Come on and start walking through the city and gather the people together. Isaiah 55 verse 4. What did he say? A leader and a commander have made you amongst the people. And the people you don't know, you'll call them into order. Isaiah 46, 9 to 13 talked about a man sent from a far country to the east. This is the east uh, where the bird of prey flies, which is we found out is the Egyptian eagle. There are Egyptian eagles in Nairobi. They've yes. flown to my house. The trees, I've seen them. And the Lord says, a people you don't know, you'll call them into a new order. Yeah. The Lord says he needs a prophet. He needs a voice. Uh, he needs a deliverer. I tell you, I am a financial deliverer. I am a prophet of the living God speaking what is on his mind for you. Lift your hands right now. The fire is falling here. Apostle, the fire is no, falling no, no, here. No, 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 it will no, 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 not no, no, live from this place. It, yes. It's going to begin to move. Uh, yes. All right. Uh, the number the Lord gave me was 8,000. 8,000 shillings only. That's it. That's what he said. New beginning. 8,000 shillings, which is the number of new beginnings. And the Lord said, tell me, t told me, he said, tell the people, some of them don't have that right now. You can take a step forward and say, I'll do that. I can do a part of it. I can do half of it. I can do a quarter of it. I can do a third of it. But I, give me a minute to do it. I want to plant that seed for a new beginning. I want to set a new standard of a plateau. I want you, if that's you, to begin to come here and stand here at the altar. Just walk out of your seat and come and stand here. Yes. Stand here right now and say, Lord, I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll do that. I want to prophesy over you. I want to prophesy the blessing of the Lord over you. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you for the touch of heaven. Thank you, Jesus. The fresh fire, the fresh yes. anointing, the new visitation, the new yes. beginning is coming forth. Yes, dear, upon you. Yes, dear, upon you. Yes. Yes, dear. Oh, that's the power yes. of God. Yes, dear, it's upon you. It's upon you, sweetheart. 
It's upon you, dear. Oh, Jesus. yes, yes, yes. I knew you'd come. I, I saw you. I saw you. I knew you'd come. The power of heaven is coming. Father, upon your son here. Upon your son here. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Take a step of faith. Say, I'll sow that as God gives it to me. As God provides, I'll sow that. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mighty God, we worship. Favor will follow you from Mighty tonight. God. The Lord says, get ready for fire. The fire of his favor. The blessing of the Lord. That makes rich and adds no sorrow. Thank you, Jesus. You will see. Thank you, Jesus. From tonight. God says a new movement in the city. I'm raising economic pillars. I'm raising champions. I'm raising giants. And the Lord says, get ready for I'm summoning them forth. I'm summoning them forth. And you're going to begin to see the most astounding provisions. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. The most astounding people coming your way, I prophesy. Amen. You'll tell us about it. Jesus. I met this person. I met this situation. I walked into this opportunity. I had no idea it was going to happen. And the Lord's going to prosper you. Everybody lift your hands right now. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus.